Hi, I'm John Shepherd of the Strategy and Planning team here at Rocket Mill. Welcome to my forefront today, which is going to be around the topic of viewability, and what I suppose some might consider a slightly old-fashioned point of view, or at least quite an unfashionable view. Because I don't really consider viewability to be a measure of ROI in itself. Up front, I should be clear on what I'm referring to by the term viewability. Viewability simply refers to how much of a paid digital media placement is served in the view of the user. So how much and how often is an ad placement within the screen of a user's device? The Internet Advertising Bureau provides an industry standard for viewability endorsed by the Media Rating Council. They outline two elements to consider a placement in view. The pixel requirement, that at least half an ad is in view, and the time requirement, that that takes place over the course of at least one second. They do not offer within this definition any analysis that was done to establish that standard, nor provide any insight as to what the natural delivery of impressions that meet the standard in the market is. Here's another standard as is defined by the biggest media in town, who consider an ad to only be viewable if it is wholly served in view and reference user behaviour on specific platforms. Again, there is little analysis as to what this higher standard actually delivers to the bottom line. One might conclude that demanding a higher level from suppliers and industry standards of a certain trackable is just a savvy way of leveraging buying power to at least demonstrate your campaigns are delivering above average industry standards in the absence of delivering anything more tangibly beneficial. The fact that there is not a single view of the truth concerning what in view is perhaps indicates the caution that must be exercised in considering it a measure of return on investment. Moving away for a moment from what viewability actually is, we can be very clear on some things it definitely is not. Viewability is not the same as view through rate, which refers to the duration of a video placement that is played to a viewer on average. It's not to be mistaken for ad fraud. We have seen through the industry definition that viewability is a market condition, whereas ad fraud is quite simply criminality looking to take money under false pretenses. And lastly, it's not to be mistaken for a brand safety consideration, which is concerned with how contextually appropriate the environment which ads are served in is, or indeed is not. Unfortunately, these all remain clear and present dangers, or at least concerns, in the world of digital marketing, and is it essential for any advertiser online to avail themselves of the best means to be preemptive and proactive in this space, and to mitigate against the risk. Further, I would strongly advise that a third-party tech is put in place to provide this service, rather than entrust your media supplier or buyer to mark their own homework. It's a fairly cluttered market of would-be providers in this space. Our assessment at Rocket Mill indicates that Integral Ad Science and Moat are clear of the pack in the sophistication of their capability currently. But returning now to the substantial issue for today, viewability is not a measure of return on investment. And I can prove it. Let's do some maths. <laughs> So let's consider the two broad objectives of marketing investment, our down and dirty DR brief to deliver performance, or something around brand. Looking at performance first, here are two placements that might be available through a programmatic exchange. The fact that in the performance space we are primarily dealing with inventory secured through a programmatic platform is hugely significant, as it means the market conditions of those are near real-time trading and the price is determined by demand and supply. I should credit Google for making such a nice template so readily available online. <laughs> when this page loads, only the top one of these placements is in view, served above the fold. Let's consider the implications of this in the real-time dynamic of our media buy. Let's start with a nominal campaign budget of £250. Let's say that the price of a placement is likely to be served above the fold is £8 cost per mil, at a bit of a premium versus marketers' averages due to the high demand for viewable impressions. With our budget of £250, you could buy over 31,000 of these above-the-fold impressions. Let's say that 70% of the time these impressions are served, consistent with the IOB definition of viewability, that half the ad is in view for at least a second. That's a little under 22,000 viewable impressions secured. Due to that premium above-the-fold placement, a fairly decent performance click-through rate of 0.08% is delivered. So for your £250 budget, you have 17 clicks at a cost per click of £15. Let's scroll down now and have a look at what our programmatic buyer is delivering below the fold. Same budget, but the excess supply and limited demand for such inventory means a placement can be secured at a CPM of just 70 pence. Of the 357,000 impressions secured in this instance, only a third of them are in view according to IOB standards. It stands to reason that these will perform at a far less competitive average click-through rate of, say, 0.02%. But even with this far diminished performance in terms of both viewability and response, we can see that the programmatic cost efficiencies in securing the inventory mean you still get more bang for your buck below the fold. Although this is an illustrative example, the range of prices, viewability and click-through rates are all well within the market norms. 
The implication is clear. If this nominal campaign had been optimised against viewability, it would have had an inflationary effect on how well it performed and compromised on paid traffic to site and everything that comes with that. But what about our brand campaigns? Surely the idea of having a brand placement delivered out of view is a bit of a non sequitur. Well, maybe not quite. When you buy brand, your consideration is not so solely dedicated to the target audience alone. Context, environment and association are all things that are still likely to be valuable when we're looking to land a brand. You might well secure a placement on a tenancy or takeover basis, for example. So let's think about that. Here is a page, credit to which this time for the template, that a brand may want to secure all the placements of to maximise their potential exposure to Twitter's hard-to-reach audience of dedicated consumers. Again, some of these placements are above the fold and some are delivered below the fold. But a brand would still be well advised to secure the whole lot because the best way to maximise their exposure to the audience in this context is to maximise their share of voice. Because what are they achieving by doing so? They are maximising their target audience's opportunity to see them. This is really the only measure of viewability that an advertiser should be concerned with. And guess what? It's a fairly old-fashioned one. Whether we consider the hundreds of channels you could be watching on the telly instead of the one a particular ad is on, or how many ads are going to be seen by how many people in the paper, or how many people go past a certain site so many times without noticing what's on it, or how many routine, regular or infrequent listeners are actually listening during a certain transmission, any media is only 100% viewable to those who have viewed it. Opportunity to see is a well-established performance parameter in all media planning, buying and reporting. In this context, should a scroll down really be considered something so uniquely apart from a switch on or a switch over on TV, a flick through the paper, looking up to see what outdoor ad is in place, or tuning into a certain radio transmission? So, if viewability and the optimising and trading of it is not the panacea some would have us believe for digital media, how do we establish what we should be buying and if it was worth it? Well, it's high time we considered the consumer path to conversion and what our expectations actually are at each stage of it. Because, as we all would recognise, it is not the same throughout. Driving awareness well does not have the same immediate outcomes as sweeping up conversions. So why would it be judged through the same lens or by the same criteria? In our strategy and planning at Rocket Mill, we recognise the different marketing objectives that might inform media investment. We recognise the different objectives of driving brand awareness, increasing consideration, building engagement, and yes, of course, delivering meaningful conversion, something I consider our paid media team to be insurpassable in. And we recognise that the particular objective of a campaign should inform the brief, and we commit that for every brief, a KPI should be identified, a metric should be established to report against that KPI, and a relevant benchmark should be set. Your media plan should not only, or perhaps even, feature the commodity you are buying and the price of it, impressions and CPM, for example, as that will only allow you to track delivery. Amongst the noise, you should consider these fundamental signals that allow you to assess your return on investment. So what about viewability? It's not up there as a metric, or as a benchmark, or as a KPI. So why would you make it a brief or an objective? So next time you find someone saying to you, or even worse, saying to yourself, to really cut through here, what we need is more impressions at a greater level of viewability. I'm pleased to question, by what end and to what means? The answer to delivering on your business objective through digital media is not to make more impressions trackable by a machine, but to maximise the opportunity for a person to see you by following a framework that speaks to every stage of the consumer journey. So, to support you in that, four key takeouts. Marketing principles have not changed, but digital can make measurement better. The principle of planning to maximise opportunity to see is not a challenge particular to digital media, it is a fundamental consideration of all media planning and buying. Digital does have, however, some fantastic tech opportunities to really measure the things that matter. Beware the digital-only currencies and metrics and measurements as there are considerable vested interests, which are, of course, all the agencies and suppliers and buyers that have been dealing in long-term impressions with a little accountability so far. And as an extension of that, viewability tracking as it is currently practiced actually serves to maintain the status quo. It will not in itself make the internet a better opportunity for marketers because it will not make it a better experience for consumers. The only challenge your agency should be dealing with is demonstrating how they are moving the needle. If they're not able to convince with reference to tangible outcomes, do not buy into spuriously channel bespoke metrics. And finally, what will make the internet a better experience for consumers is that you think about what your campaign needs to achieve at each stage of the path to conversion and plan investment accordingly 
and optimise against it and test and learn against it and feed those insights into your always-on cyclical planning approach. These points are fundamental to our strategy and planning approach at Rocket Mill and the interdependency of pay media with all our service lines underpinned by the best in the business at Data and Insight. Thanks for your time.